Thank you. It's a, actually an honor and a privilege to be here to speak to members of the medical community that are focused on clinical trials, those folks that are interested. And the primary goal as a professional drug developer, I've been I worked on ipilimumab, by the way, as a product uh, that was mentioned earlier, but uh, to develop options for patients. That's what we're all about. And if you develop a drug, and this is the one I'm working on right now, it's in this little bottle, that actually improves the life or the prospects or the chances or the statistics to help a patient in any type of disease indication, it is so gratifying. So anyway, today we're here to talk about Nuvox Pharma. This is the actual product we're using in clinical trials right now. We make it in Tucson, Arizona. Through a simple intravenous administration, you can increase the oxygen carrying capacity of blood. Now, why is that a good thing? Well, as we talk about our clinical trial, we are in a brain cancer trial. We're treating glioblastoma patients as we speak. We are improving the effectiveness of radiation treatment. If you can increase the concentration of oxygen in blood, you can, sorry, <clears throat> you can reverse tissues that have low oxygen. Thereby, in radiation treatment, one aspect of treating patients' uh, solid tumors with radiation therapy is to increase the concentration of oxygen and split it into oxygen-free radicals. And that improves the local tumor killing uh, by improving the, rec the effectiveness of radiation treatment. So as a snapshot, now unf well, not unfortunately, uh, Nuvox elected to do their clinical trial. We're in phase 1B. And, and I, I view clinical trials as more of a metamorphosis of drug development. It's a transitional process. It's, it, you collect data and inform yourself, inform your decision-making process along the way. So it's really difficult uh, to segment uh, the development process, but uh, we've elected to call this a phase 1B. We are treating cancer patients. It is a primarily, uh, the primary endpoint is safety. Uh, we're also collecting pharmacokinetic data, uh, physiological data on patients, and our product is an adjunct to the standard of care to improve the effectiveness of radiation. Uh, <clears throat> we went to Australia because the Australian government actually gives us a 45% refund on every dollar we spend in research and development in Australia. So. Uh, <clears throat> I would have loved to have done this in Arizona or the United States. However, the Australian government was much more accommodating uh, to help cover the economic costs of developing a drug. And I can speak more to that. This company, uh, we have eight employees that are focused on the development of the product, but uh, we've done it primarily bootstrap through grants, through friends, through family. Uh, angel investors, uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we have two grants pending right now. Uh, we have an actually active grant right now. We're collaborating with uh, Barrow Neurological Institute in glioblastoma. So, um, and, and then we, we did have to sell stock. I know that's sort of the dirty side of business, but uh, we had to uh, fund the company. We had to create equity and value for shareholders and uh, get to a commercial stage as soon as possible. This is how it works. You inject approximately 10 mils, 10 cc's intravenously, and it slowly raises the oxygen concentration in a low oxygen environment. This is done in an animal where you've implanted a, an oxygen probe. Uh, the green bar on the right shows that having oxygen present relative to a, a, a hypoxic control animal uh, improves the outcome of radiation. So this is the, the animal rationale that gives us uh, the commitment, the confidence where we can go forward and, and uh, potentially help a, th a therapeutic approach and improve the current standard of care. <clears throat> 
A lot of people get radiation therapy. This is just a statistic in the United States. There are a million people. 85% of solid tumors are hypoxic or low in oxygen. Uh, it takes three times the amount of radiation to kill a solid tumor with radiation in the absence of oxygen. So our approach is to see how fast we can improve the effectiveness and shrink tumors in patients. And again, when you're looking at MRI and you see a tumor shrink, it is so gratifying. Oh, I, f I have to mention one thing. This particular product was previously approved in Europe and submitted to the FDA as an ultrasound contrast imaging agent. It was just, as a sidebar, discovered that, oh, by the way, it carries oxygen. So we have licensed this product. We have access to all the historical data, the, the new drug application that's on file with the FDA, the European authorities. Uh, we know it's safe already because it's been in 2,200 people. Uh, but it's been, we are simply repurposing this. And so that has allowed us with $7.1 million to get into clinical development with a product that uh, we know to be safe and does have biological activity. All we have to do is execute on a reasonable clinical plan to show that it works. All the research in, in the room have cured rats before. We have, we have cured diseases in animals that are, may not be relevant. The proof of the pudding is in the patient. Remember that. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Most tumor, 85% of tumors are hypoxic. Uh, we chose uh, glioblastoma, a brain cancer, uh, solid tumor. Uh, whether they're resectable or unresectable, it doesn't matter. We, we're, we're simply leaving them, uh, providing an option for patients because their current outcomes. Uh, the current statistic, you have a 5% chance of living three years if you go through the current standard of care. If you don't embark on radiation therapy and chemo or surgery as an option, you uh, typically will live about four months. So we have many options, but we've chosen glioblastoma because it is a, represents a tremendous unmet medical need, and from a regulatory perspective, strategically, the FDA are looking and trying to support companies that are developing innovative therapies just to move the needle to provide options for patients. And the FDA is your partner in this, by the way. They're your friend. Um, I have good experience working with them and they have always been supportive. Uh, the only criteria you have to subscribe to is to do good science and do no harm. <clears throat> Here's, an, here's a, a scan from a patient. So the patient on, on uh, your left uh, is post-resected, and the red arrow points to the tumor, and those that measure tumors sizes for a living uh, tell us that uh, four weeks after completing the course of therapy, uh, the tumor has shrunk by 80%. Um, this, this particular patient, uh, was diagnosed and, and uh, entered our trial a year ago and, and remains alive today. But again, the primary endpoint for a phase 1B is safety, and we're looking at pharmacokinetics or, <clears throat> or the physiological uh, treatments of your drug in the body. How long does it last? What's the half-life? What are the local toxicities? How much uh, shows up in certain body parts? So, uh, the reason I like this is because it's already been in 2,200 patients. So, I joined NuVox two years ago as the chief business officer to bring it into the clinic, to conduct whatever preclinical work was required to get a clinical trial started. Um, I forgot to mention, we're also an ACA Innovation Challenge winner uh, company this year. So, thank you for that support. Um, it, it's going to go along, it helps us. Uh, cover the valley of death anyway, at least the $250,000. Uh, we have patents of, let's see, there's one thing about this product. If you are first in class, uh, you can have 12 years of exclusivity, uh, irrespective of your patent position. So that's a good thing. 
Uh, we do have patents and we guard them, we amplify them and uh, try and expand the patent estate fence around protecting our technology. Uh, but if you're first to market, you do have some benefit. Heart attack, stroke, hemorrhagic shock, these are all things where low oxygen uh, can cause problems. I'm working with the Air Force right now in a hemorrhagic shock, mo shock model. They're doing it in pigs. Uh, they will take our clinical trial data uh, when we file an IND in this country uh, and then conduct clinical trials uh, to, to see if they can mitigate the, uh, the field trauma of hemorrhagic shock and buy time for our soldiers in the field. <clears throat> Sickle cell, we have demonstrated efficacy in heart attack, reduce heart damage by 80% as well, if you give this within 90 minutes of having a heart attack, and it extends the window of the current form of therapy called TPA uh, to nine hours from uh, its current three-hour endpoint. Uh, we collaborate in Arizona, BNI, University of Arizona, our trial is at Monash, we, track, we work with the NCI uh, Radiation uh, Treatment Oncology Group, uh, University of Arkansas, the Navy, the Air Force, uh, all with eight people, all in Tucson, all in Arizona. So that's really my time. Um, thank you for this opportunity. We are passionate about what we do, and uh, thank you for coming.